welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Ulrich. So just one question I had, uh, should I uh, give the talk in English or German? Yes. It's up to you. English? Yeah. German? English or German. <laughs> OK, you can choose. German. English, OK, <laughs> perfect. So, uh, so I learned uh, currently Mesos is uh, quite a hot to topic. And uh, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, I saw something post public cloud. And I just had to include that in my slides. I personally don't know exactly what it means. But it's apparently the new hot buzzword. So I have to include that in my talk just so that I'm still uh, basically uh, still in the crowd and new and hip and cool and all this kind of stuff. So I personally currently work at log entries. Uh, and I mentioned that because uh, I, that's why I started to look into uh, Mesos uh, and uh, why I started to work with Mesos and uh, currently moving parts of our infrastructure to it. So what does um, log entries do? Uh, it's basically a log management uh, system in the cloud. Uh, so that basically means uh, we're working uh, with lines of text. I started originally in the insights project, and the insights project is somehow like getting insights from data. So what customers do, uh, what is what do they log, and if we can extract, for example, uh, some interesting information out of logs, for example, predict when uh, specific services are failing, or uh, pre predict uh, DDoS attacks on other parts of the system and things like that. So. Uh, I started to work on something called dog food. We have uh, our internal system. I, I think everybody uh, knows it, that he, the term dog fooding. So we, we have an internal system where we use our product uh, to basically collect uh, our own internal logs. And uh, I was asked to basically start working there and play around and uh, basically do something useful. So what do we do there currently? Uh, we, you can, we do search, statistics, live view, alerting, and extract metrics. And so I somehow had, was then asked to do more with it and uh, do it in real time and things like that. Uh, so of course, what every data scientist would do is I wanted all the instances to do stuff. Uh, so I basically went to the ops team, ops guy and said, look, I have this amazing thing I want to do. I don't know yet what exactly, but I want to use all available resources what I can get. He said, no. Unfortunately, it's somehow also is expected. Uh, so th that's basically the background why we started to look in, or why I originally started to look into Mesos, because I wanted to uh, run arbitrary task, uh, data analytics task, and wanted to work on it. So now just a little bit background about Mesos and uh, the computation model, uh, or the model behind it. So in classic environments, you have something called set resource allocation. So in most environments, you basically have some resource available, uh, server or box, and then you put some load into it. For example, originally it's uh, some kind of web server or database or whatever. And then uh, if you grow the company or if sub somebody is interested in your product, then you suddenly not only have a web server, but maybe have some, uh, or not only a static website, but have something useful, maybe some dynamic environment. And then as the things grow, uh, the you have the multiple things, uh, spread it out, because of uh, the load is uh, so high that you have to uh, that you have to uh, put it onto other systems, but then the problem again is uh, it's basically very inefficient. Right? You have space here, you have space here, uh, and if we then put another box in, then suddenly it looks also uh, we have even more resources left. And then if a guy like me comes along and want want to run things, I would be perfectly happy to utilize all this space and just run my things on top of it. Uh, yeah, and then basically things grow, uh, and then we put here another load, blah, blah, blah. But then the problem is, if we have live in such an environment, uh, bad things can happen, and they will. So if then suddenly uh, the system goes down uh, for some arbitrary reason, like somebody plugged the cord, or Amazon decided to shut down your instance, or for whatever reason, you will then have a problem. Uh, so then you basically uh, do it again, spread the load. But the problem is that's really somehow inefficient. So, and especially if you work with web scale, right? Web scale MongoDB. So uh, the thing is, uh, if you basically uh, don't want to have the static allocation of things and have to and have more resources, for example, workers, uh, background task, uh, 
uh, storage, uh, databases, front-end servers, uh, uh, load balance and stuff, you have a lot of different boxes and if you basically look at them, you will see that uh, they fill a lot of different uh, tasks and that there's always some resources left. So Mesos tries to basically uh, uh, tackle this problem or that's the idea behind Mesos that the static resource allocation is bad and yet that you basically have a resource uh, allocation for Mesos uh, allowing you to basically uh, manage Six. So how does it look like? So this is our resource. This is uh, our box uh, providing something. And the idea behind, uh, if you look what uh, the current computer systems have, they have 128 cores, I don't know, uh, one terabyte of uh, memory and things like that. So they are basically almost like a complete uh, data center. Because uh, if you think about it, if you see each individual core, uh, memory and uh, you can and the communication between them. Uh, this is probably a rather bad managed data center. Uh, the wiring seems to be uh, room for improvement. I think is the typical word. Uh, but the idea is you manage your computer system as you would do a data uh, center, and so and that you uh, work on that. So how does it look like? So the idea is that these that Mesos looks only at the available resources and uses that basically for allocation and uh, to, to do the allocation and decide where which uh, task uh, should run. So the assumption is basically one kernel to rule them all. So kernel in this case means uh, Mesos kernel. So the important thing is uh, that basically Mesos just has the assumption of uh, running then it on each individual node. So that means to basically allow you to manage any resources accordingly. So how does it look like? Again, we have this bunch of uh, resources and, uh, and then we put Mesos on the side. And Mesos, as I said, basically sees it as resources. So uh, what is a resource in Mesos? So uh, the first thing is we, we have a CPU. For, uh, then we have memory and then we have this. You can also have additional things, but these are the most common uh, parameters of Mesos. So uh, basically each Mesos slave or each box uh, says how much resources it's willing to provide to the system uh, so that you can run tasks accordingly. So then you basically have your things together and then uh, basically Mesos can decide uh, where to run what stuff with the information. Uh, so just a little bit background information about what resources are. So uh, CPU, memory, disk, what we talked about. The other thing is ports. Uh, so uh, that because to be the most application needs some kind of port if they are not some kind of background worker. And it can be any arbitrary thing. So you can define your own resources. So uh, ranging from either a set of numbers uh, to uh, basically values. Uh, for resource isolation, so the question is how do we uh, utilize or basically how iso uh, resources are isolated between each other. There are multiple solutions. One, probably more of the, one of the more common examples is you can utilize C groups to basically uh, divide uh, your, your system and it uses then the kernel mechanism to do that. You, the other thing is you can basically ignore it and just run uh, processes and probably because we are hip and cool, you can also run uh, or you use Docker uh, and C groups together to basically not only provide resource utilis uh, separation, but also try to isolate uh, your processes a little bit more. So uh, that's uh, quite interesting because you can use that also for using Docker images then as part of your package management because Mesos doesn't care about that much. Uh, so you can basically into it, uh, use uh, then Docker images as part of your delivery uh, and um, basically provide the environment which is needed for your processes. So that means uh, we basically have here our bunch of Mesos slaves running on each uh, host which uh, basically provides you the, to the, the ability to run uh, arbitrary task and then we have our Mesos master which is our uh, overall view and which uh, is uh, basic task to run things. So how do we run things? Now the, the part is getting interesting. Uh, so Mesos has this notion of frameworks. A framework is basically 
uh, consists of two parts, a scheduler and, and, and an executor. So if you look at the system, we basically have here two resources and we have our Mesos master. Now uh, we can use basically a framework. In this example, it would be Spark. Spark is fabulous. So if you don't know Spark and do some data analytics, you should probably look up uh, Spark. And Spark in this world is a scheduler. Uh, and then uh, what typically is happening, uh, Spark asks for asks something to be uh, run, and then uh, the slaves report to the map, report uh, what resources they are available, and then the scheduler decides on which uh, system it should run. So uh, basically, the scheduler here decides where to run, and they just offer uh, these uh, resources. So then uh, we have basically here an executor, a Spark executor is automatically downloaded to the system. And then in this, we have then this uh, arbitrary number of tasks uh, in it. And of course, be besides sp uh, Spark as a scheduler, you could run Hadoop or any other of these supported frameworks. So the, the nice thing about Mesos is it's basically if there are a bunch of frameworks available uh, which you can use out of the box and uh, where you can do different workloads. I originally started to look into it because I wanted to use Spark for my stream processing, but there are plenty of other things. So Spark, Hadoop, are, and Hadoop are probably the most famous ones. Then there is Kronos, Singularity, you can write your own, which is also rather interesting for a specific task, or some or Marathon. I personally uh, started to use Marathon uh, for our own environment, or for our own internal environment, and I will go a little bit into more details about uh, that later. So Hadoop, I think we don't need to talk about, about much about Hadoop. I think it's pretty well known. It's basically some kind of MapReduce uh, system which HGFS as an underlying system. And it's typically used uh, for data analytics uh, or running arbitrary tasks. Um, not that much for arbitrary tasks, but uh, typically, yeah, data analytics. Uh, Spark is somehow a new contender, so it's basically also the interesting thing is Spark supports stream, proce uh, stream processing as well as basically these batch shops. And it has the, the possibility to also automatically scale horizontally and uh, run things. So yeah, stream processing distributed and a uh, really interesting data structure what they have is called RDD, Resistant Distributed Something, I think. So uh, it's basically RDDs are the underlying concept of, uh, for Spark how they distribute the data and how they work on it. And if you basically uh, start looking into working uh, with distributed systems for uh, data analytics, I, uh, I really recommend having a look uh, at it. So one other thing is uh, another interesting framework is called Kronos. So Kronos also has direct Docker support. What's in, so Kronos is a distributed cron system. So that means oftentimes you have some task uh, you have to run regularly, but not you don't necessarily care where they run. They may need to run on a specific kind of machines or specific things, but on what machine exactly, you don't care. Uh, it's just important that they run. And basic Kronos is such a system on top of Mesos. Uh, so what's nice is you also can have dependencies on, in your Chrome shops. So you can say this shop has to be executed before the other shops. This allows you uh, to do uh, more advanced things. For example, you can run your garbage collector, uh, which deletes old files, and then uh, calculate the usage uh, for users, or the use bandwidth, or whatever. Uh, and the nice thing, of course, uh, we all love APIs. Uh, it also has an API, and even better, a web UI. So it even has colors. So your con uh, tab in colors, and web content, and fancy, and shiny, and bling. So, uh, but the, 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 that's interesting, right? First of all, you have an API which you can automatically control and you, do, you can specify where to and what. And the other thing is you can basically allow this, your team members to basically see the state and see and uh, define uh, dependencies on that. So that's a really neat thing. There's another framework. This was uh, written by HubSpot uh, called Singularity. Singularity is somehow the thing which tries to do everything. So uh, it basically targets long running jobs uh, talk shops, uh, also uh, some kind of regular shops like uh, cron based shops. Uh, it has things like custom logging, uh, uh, supports rollback and health checks. So it's basically uh, the nice thing about all these uh, 
frameworks as they are actively developed. In so Mesos is, I think, now three or four years old. These uh, frameworks, uh, these companies use it quite heavily and invest in it and uh, basically do the development even in the open. So you can use it, for example, uh, Singularity has does things integrated that you can do also rolling uh, upgrades. So you can say this is your health check and you, if you do an upgrade you only want to uh, basically upgrade, uh, you have to uh, have, you start 20% 20, 20 new instances and only if they, they are running you basically start additional uh, uh, instances and you can keep for example the old uh, ins instances uh, running even so the uh, even so, your load balancer already moves over to the new one. They, it also has integration into commercial load balancer. So it's quite interesting uh, to be able to move your load around and upgrade things. And then basically, the normal stuff like rollbacks. Uh, this is something which is also interesting, which we are doing ourselves. Uh, so you can also write your own framework. Your own framework, uh, is, it's very simple. So uh, why would you do that? So uh, the if you have some kind of distributed jobs uh, written, for example, some graph processing, or need to uh, have some things which are not easily expressed directly as executable, but you want to write it directly in your JVM, and this, or in, in, in Python or whatever, this is a perfect thing to do. And the nice thing is it basically provides you with job tracking. That means normally if you write some kind of executable, it's not that hard, but uh, tracking which job is where, if it's still running, if it failed, where, where to move things. This is the, these are typically then the hard parts, which let's be honest, no developer wants to do, because that's all ops, right? Uh, so the nice thing is, uh, Mesos can uh, take care of that and provide you with an environment to do the correct thing. Uh, so, uh, and the nice thing for developers is basically, uh, they, it offers a bunch of options to write their, uh, your, your thing. So it can be either JVM uh, based or uh, Scala, Java, uh, C++, Python, Go, uh, or Clojure, or whatever suits your uh, suits you. Uh, so now I'm going a little bit um, uh, more detailed into Marathon because so far it, I think was quite theoretical. Uh, not that theoretical, but probably a little bit boring. Uh, and probably you you ask yourself why am I so excited about Mesos that I'm giving a talk? Uh, but hopefully uh, Marathon will. Uh, hopefully uh, show it. Uh, so Mason is a, is a very simple framework so, uh, targeting long running processes. So typically some web services or things which are not that short lived. It provides whole health checks, rollbacks, supports also things like rolling upgrades as I talked before. Uh, again, an API and also uh, most important thing for me, web uh, interface. So now I'm trying to do a little bit of demo. Uh, hopefully it won't fail too badly. Mm. The problem is I have now to change the display that I knew. Oh, it's even responsive. How great is that? Like responsive uh, web uh, frameworks for managing your servers in the cloud. Like that's fantastic, right? So uh, this is basically now uh, Marathon uh, running a, in a uh, test environment. It only, I think, has two or or three uh, servers running. This. So if I say new app, then you have to give it ID, uh, which is rather. In, uh, stupid in this case because I'm not a very creative person so I call just a GLT. You then specify basically how many resources uh, your system needs. In this case uh, we do something simple and then you have to basically specify the command uh, what to run. So this is uh, because I'm a really uh, great programmer, simple HTTP server, right? That should be the correct. So I basically just want to run now uh, HTTP server there. 
So uh, then I can basically specify the port which it should run. And because again, I'm such a creative person, uh, I just use the year here. So now we have a, now if I would just execute this, we already would have a problem uh, because th this is currently not using Docker or dedicated IPs. So that means if I would uh, now launch this uh, configuration multiple times on uh, one system, we would have a uh, duplication of ports. So uh, what Marathon here has is basically it has a mapping. Uh, it sets an environment variable called port, which is basically a port provided by the service uh, uh, where, where your thing should bind to. And if you basically have your multiple ports and have, you have your port one, port two, port, uh, to port n. So I'm just testing this before, not that I'm making a, a complete fool of myself. I have no, 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 no. Apparently this is the wrong thing. And did I just close my window? Ah, no, ah, okay. Keep, no, it's, it's perfect, yeah. This is the correct command. Ah. So now I just, yeah, so, and basically this port variable is indicating on which port uh, it should bind. And then uh, also you can basically uh, provide a URL where uh, things should be downloaded and uh, can also, for example, list constraints. So for example, you could say that these systems should not run on the same host. Uh, so for example, if you have databases and you typically don't want to run multiple ins uh, instances of a database on the same system, uh, so you want to distribute it uh, and can basically specify arbitrary constraint or for example say this should only run on systems which are tagged as a database or things like that. And then you uh, can just uh, click create and then we basically see deploying and you see basically uh, on which uh, systems it's currently running. So please see the great naming scheme, scheme DS partly 01 and 02 so we have uh, I convinced uh, our admins to name them uh, properly with Sparkly or one to Sparkly, I don't know how many, um, because originally they were intended to be only one as, as uh, for Spark, but then I discovered Mesos and I run now all the things on it, but the name is still fabulous, I think. Uh, and you can basically see uh, the configuration uh, then here and uh, use that. So uh, it also supports a simple API uh, so if I, you can basically uh, query uh, here the uh, running processes uh, and it provides you basically uh, then with the details. Uh, and if I basically, it looks like I'm even prepared something, no, who would have thought. Uh, you can then basically uh, get the details about the application where it's running, which uh, ports are mapped, uh, uh, what container you use, for example, you can, because you can use uh, Docker, you can specify then uh, different Docker images and things like that. So you can basically use that to manage uh, the complete life cycle of your thing. So let's try to, let's try to go back. Yeah, uh, so, does this work? Hmm. Somehow I'm losing my presenter screen. It's bad, this place. I knew there was a shortcut, but I forgot it. What's the shortcut then? Okay. So now we have one problem, right? Uh, these things now run on arbitrary hosts. Uh, arbitrary, uh, first of all, arbitrary hosts. You don't know where they run. And let's be honest, I don't care. At least I as a data scientist. Ops people typically care where things run, but I'm just like a person. I just want to compute things. I just want to get my job done and I don't care where, where it's running. So the question is how do you uh, get to it? Uh, so one thing uh, is if you don't use these random ports and can guarantee, for, for example, uh, where things run, 
who can, uh, for example, use uh, DNS, and who would have thought there's something uh, called Mesos DNS, which basically takes the information out uh, from your frameworks and offers you to an uh, uh, name server. So for example, that if you go then to resolve glt dot uh, your internal domain dot uh, gld dot com, uh, I'm so great with names, I must admit. Uh, and then you will basically get the correct response uh, telling you on which uh, system it's running. Uh, there's also something really interesting, I think, uh, with a smart stack, uh, which was started, I think, for, by Yelp. Uh, and they, I really like the system, and that's what uh, we basically using. So what smarts that? Smart is basically just HA proxy, uh, but it's basically HA proxy on steroids. Who would have thought? So uh, the idea behind it is basically use uh, HA proxy uh, to uh, go. You always go to localhost and then the port you bind it to. The, so in our example, it would be localhost 2020, uh, 2015. I'm sorry, I'm ahead in the time somehow. So localhost 2015 and the uh, HA proxy configuration would know uh, or HA proxy would know where the system is running. Um, so this information you can get typically you can get out of uh, uh, out of Mesos or Merson and get uh, uh, get the information. But SmartStack uh, goes a little bit uh, further. So uh, SmartStack has two things. Uh, one is called Synapse and one is Nerf. Uh, Nerf is the sy system which basically runs on each system and does health checks. And then they have something else called Synapse, which is basically used to generate the HA proxy configuration on uh, changes. So what's happening is basically Nerf runs on each system, checks, 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 is everything okay? If something fails, it publishes the information either via COQ or uh, uh, Zookeeper or whatever. And then Synapse on all the systems basically receive the notification and rewrite the HA proxy configuration and bam, the system is off or uh, for example, add the, a new system. We won't use that uh, because, uh, to be honest, there's even support, uh, I think there was a merge request directly to support HA uh, to support um, Marathon with uh, uh, Synapse to basically get the information out of there because uh, then you don't need to necessarily run Nerf, but if uh, you already have a, a tracking system and a managing system for your jobs, you can get directly the information out of uh, Merson itself. So yeah, so we you basically use HA proxy for it. Again, demo time, uh, demo time, yeah. So again, now this awkward thing where I have to change the displays that I can see anything and uh, not look like a complete fool. Okay, that's the wrong window. They close the other one. Ah, so here we are. So I knew that was a bad idea. Okay, so uh, what's what there is available is basically uh, the information is already published uh, from. Ah, am I in the VPN? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the information is already available uh, uh, in Marathon to uh, this port mapping. We, we've seen that before with, uh, with here where we know uh, which port it is. Uh, and there's basically a program available. As I still have to try. I'm sorry, I know it's very annoying. Uh, so at least, so watch. And one and GOT, ETC, HA proxy. Yeah, 
um, at least. So we basically uh, can see uh, that uh, it's, it's currently automatic configured. Uh, uh, and so if I now connect on the system basically to Telnet localhost, I think we had 2015, I can do a get HTTP uh, and basically uh, see the information and uh, get the listing. So the interesting thing then as well is uh, we can also do uh, either, for example, over the web app. So for example, because we are web scale and hip and cool, you can ch and if you have to scale now your really hard project with uh, serving uh, the local directory via Python, you can for either just click scale and enter a number and it would work. You have to believe me. But because clicking around this, uh, you, there's even an API for it, right? Who would have thought? So if I now go for uh, basically instances, uh, so if I say, for example, instead of having, uh, having one instance, but now I'm getting really a lot of traffic on my uh, Python simple HTTP server, I can even go to 10 or whatever. Now, now, I, now it's getting hot in here, right? Uh, and now uh, it's basically, uh, the thing gets automatically deployed. Uh, so what that, that mean is, first of all, we see it here, it's deploying, huh? isn't that great? Uh, but we basically see now how many instances they are running and it will basically automatically decide on uh, which systems uh, uh, these happening. And we can also do rollback and things like that. What's also interesting, it, it also provides you, uh, oh, we are already at nine out, out of 10, like, Great. What's also interesting is it provides you also with a version of your basic configuration. So if, for example, you release something new and it's not working, you can easily roll back to it. So how does this look like now? Hopefully I waited long enough because uh, this is a test setup, so uh, the thing is basically not updated in real time. So we see currently we already have here now four, five services. Uh, so this is basically just currently one via Quantab. So probably at the end of this minute, so we can count down slowly. I'm, I'm trying to talk slowly now that it doesn't look too bad. Uh, we will now see basically a bunch of additional uh, services magically appearing and uh, send out uh, on these hosts. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Ooh, who would have thought it worked? <sighs> Lucky me. Um, so, and that's really, we are really neat thing uh, because A, we, uh, we should just use established technology. So HAProxy is basically battle tested well enough uh, for service discovery. You always just connect to your local well-established port. You don't have to do something special. Uh, instead of using DNS, with, which all has these problems like uh, caching or things like that, uh, or choosing the uh, preferring specific hosts, uh, it just works. Uh, and uh, you basically, if you want it, just this HAProxy distributed everywhere, you basically, it's basically your, your way to discover things and uh, it, it's the same thing in your local test environment uh, versus your uh, production environment, etc. So that's really neat uh, and everybody loves in direction. So now comes unfortunately the time where we have to end the life cycle of our really great product, right? Uh, so, and there's even a thing called destroy app so you can basically get rid of it and then it asks, are we sure? Yes. And then uh, we basically uh, terminate it and then it's gone. Uh, this again will take a while, so we probably don't have to wait for it. You just have to take my word uh, for it that it will uh, happen. But uh, the nice thing is uh, having something like HAProxy for service discovery, independent of the technology, underlying technology use, using in your dynamic environment, I think is very powerful. I, I'm pretty sure most of you already use it, uh, but I think. Uh, having it basically hooked it up to Zookeeper or your, your uh, local invent, uh, your local uh, system, either Puppet or whatever to basically uh, feed that in is I think very, very neat uh, so that you don't necessarily have to edit configuration files uh, directly. Now that I talked that long, uh, we can wait the rest and now we probably hopefully see nothing. No, 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 no. Oh, nothing, really? Great. So I just, unfortunately I destroyed the other app now. No. Uh, so okay, so that's good. Uh, and that's uh, basically Melson. Uh, then I, uh, there are other frameworks, for example, Singularity or Aurora, which do, uh, do a little bit more. But I, to, let's be honest, I just started with it because it was very approachable and uh, it's, it's, it's working well. Uh, 
But are there buts? I don't know. You have to wait till the end of this talk. No display. I think that was the last thing where I had to do it. So hopefully it will be running faster now. Oh, yeah, demo. That was that. Uh, so the other thing is HA Mesos, right? Uh, ChromeDB only saw basically one uh, Mesos uh, master. So if it, the Mesos master goes down, oh, everything goes down, uh, which is bad. So we have to do that somehow. Uh, the good thing is Mesos master basically depends on two people. Uh, to basically record the information, uh, record the information and do master selection. So if you basically get a bunch of zookeeper instances, which you probably have running in your environment anyway, uh, for Hadoop or I don't know what, and if you don't, maybe you should stop using zookeeper. Uh, then you can basically have uh, some hot send by Mesos master, uh, which uh, then automatically, if basically the first Mesos master goes down, uh, will overtake the world. So there's other stuff. Right, Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is uh, basically a very interesting concept uh, or basically framework developed uh, by Google. Uh, it's basically the uh, newer version of Borg, I think. There was also something else. But uh, it's basically another thing to how to organize your environment and um, uh, run services in them and uh, combine things, for example. The application I was showing was really stupid, right? It only has one component, but typically you want to run multiple things together. For example, uh, uh, cache the along with your web application with a database and things like that. So uh, Google has basically the, or uh, Kubernetes, sorry. Uh, uh, the most important thing is basic pod. I think if I'm not mistaken, to be honest, I didn't look very much into uh, Kubernetes, but if I'm not mistaken, pod, one pod is basically describes a uh, bunch of services working, or a bunch of things working together to offer a service. Uh, you have labels uh, and things like that, but I don't go too much into details because there's uh, Kubernetes Mesos. Uh, so uh, that's uh, basically the idea, uh, because Mesos is very abstract, uh, so there's basically this framework uh, where you can uh, have the same term, uh, a, a support basically similar things and have the same uh, support system and uh, the same concept on Mesos uh, as on Kubernetes. Other thing is, there are digital ocean, for example, if you want to get started, digital ocean offers something where you can, I, I don't know, pay how much and you get a complete Kuber uh, Mesos cluster uh, offered, uh, configured already, and where you can al already uh, start playing and uh, evaluating things. So, and even better, like two days ago, unbelievable, uh, Apple announced that they are using C, uh, for Siri, they are using Mesos as a background uh, thing. So now Mesos is now really the latest shit uh, because uh, even, it, well, even uh, your iPhone uses it. But of course, not everything is great. So uh, I'm pretty sure most of you, most of you know, call me maybe uh, this uh, thing where basically distributed databases are uh, looked into. There, this is not call me maybe, but it's basically a pseudo call me maybe, because one guy was looking basically into different failure models, like for example, what happens if zookeeper crashes, what happens if uh, connection between executor happens and things like that. So there are some gotchas which you have to be aware if you start looking into it. So uh, just to basically, uh, I'm coming to the end of my talk, just to basically give you the most thing. I heard this real cool buzzword, cluster democratization. So the idea is basically that people like me can run things on stuff, uh, ops people manage and uh, basically uh, get rid of the uh, static resource allocation and basically allow people not only to get data but run arbitrary jobs and uh, use in the environment. Uh, basically Mesos is about resource management. Uh, compared to other things, uh, these slaves basically don't accept jobs but they offer resources and the framework then decides where to run things. It has, uh, it has high available system. Uh, and this important thing is Mesos all the things. So if for example, uh, I know we are already in 2015, so microservices are basically old, old thing. But if for example running uh, microservices or independent services on Mesos are very nice. And especially also uh, things for distributed environment where you have to have some kind of job tracking and get notification when things fail or want to restart things or scale uh, things somehow. Uh, Somehow, uh, that's basically a nice thing. So, 
uh, I'm basically at the end of the talk. Any questions? So basically, zookeeper and mesos, okay. masters and sylph. That's the mandatory thing. Right. And then you basically, then it depends what you want. So that's all about mesos. Mesos offers basically some kind of uh, thing to one things on resources. And it basically, a framework, whatever the framework does is basically, it decides uh, from the offerings from these slaves what to run where. And, uh, so you, you've seen basically the frameworks are quite uh, diverse. So we, we use, there is for example, Apache Spark, uh, which is uh, data analysis. There it goes basically to something like Marathon, which is about uh, making, uh, offering uh, some services to your environment. So, and uh, with things like uh, rolling upgrades and things like that. So it's a quite abstract concept. And it, uh, by having this abstract concept, you have the ability to basically uh, adjust it to your specific needs. So if you have, for example, uh, we have something like anomaly alerts or things like that where for specific customers uh, and then we can basically run them on whatever node they run, we don't care, uh, and basically uh, hook them up with the information and if something fails, uh, we can say, for example, that it should automatically restart or there's something like, you can, for example, marathon, you can say you have to have at least 10 or X percent healthy instances. So, for example, you can sell 20, but if five, uh, uh, if five uh, instances fail of the thing, you don't care. So that's all basically up to the framework uh, then to decide. Is this somehow clear? No, not really. No, so no, basically, uh, Mesos itself already has uh, some uh, support for uh, Docker, but Marathon is basically this framework where you can specify these ports and uh, uh, download things. And uh, for example, Marathon has this offer where it uh, offers directly support for generating uh, HA proxy configuration uh, uh, out of the information published. And it keeps also these audit logs and things like that. Any other questions? No, I probably was uh, confusing a lot of people then, sadly. So if the only takeaway of this talk is, uh, you should probably still look at Mesos. Uh, even though it's basically uh, very abstract, uh, uh, it can offer you a lot of uh, uh, benefits. And uh, yeah, by having a flexible environment, uh, you can also integrate it with other deployment strategies, for example, uh, like Kubernetes. Uh, for example, I think Mika recently uh, mentioned uh, something like uh, Mesos ECS, so uh, for Elastic Cloud Scheduler, uh, where, uh, and integrates with that. Uh, so, and the good thing is, uh, by having something uh, like that, you can basically offer, use it as a platform as a service, for example, Marathon platform as a service internally, it's quite easy to uh, use. So you provide the API to your, uh, uh, to your internal environment and they can just launch uh, things accordingly and uh, in a uh, uh, say safe uh, manner. And if you're using that Docker, then you basically also solve somehow the uh, packaging problem by basically providing it at the, to the correct environment because otherwise it would just run basically as process on the system. Uh, which is fine, for example, with JVM, but if you, or if your, your system is always the same, but if you have a little bit more complex environment, then you probably want to start using uh, uh, Docker or container or even uh, VMs for that. Anything else? No? Okay, thanks.